Welcome to Function Analysis. In this video, we're going to talk about understanding the rate of change at a point of a function. So I say understanding because at the end of this video, we're not going to actually determine how to actually find the rate of change at a point, but we just want to make sure that in this video, you understand what it is you're trying to find. Later on, we'll actually talk about how to do it. So first, let's get that textbook definition for the rate of change at a point. The rate of change of a function at a point quantifies the rate at which output values would change were the input values to change at that point. The rate of change at a point can be approximated by the average rates of change of the function over small intervals containing the point, if such value exists. Now listen, read that three times fast. It sounds like a Dr. Seuss riddle. Like I get that that's confusing. So let's do my best to make sure you understand it as simple as you can. So here we have a function, beautiful purple function here, and we're analyzing uh, one specific point. So the one specific point you can see there is negative two comma seven, negative two comma seven, input negative two, output seven. All right, so if we wanna find the rate of change at that point, what we wanna find is, you know, in the in earlier we talked about, in a previous video, hopefully you watched it, we talked about find the rate of change between two points. And what we did was we connected the two points. And when you connect two points of a function, you create what's called a secant line. Well, we don't have two points. We only have one point. So what we want to do is we want to find the average rate of change, but it's no longer an average, right? To find an average, you need two points. I don't have two points. I have one point. So what I want to do is not find the average rate of change. I want to find the rate of change at that point. And like the definition said, I'll go back to it real quickly because it's kind of weird, but it says the rate of change of a function at a point quantifies the rate at which output values would change were the output values to change at that point. So we're admitting that, you know, we're at a point, so the output values aren't changing because there's only one of them, but it's quantifying the rate at which the output values would change. Now, again, it's not like Dr. Seuss real, I get it. But here's the idea. If I want to find the rate of change at this point, what I want to do is I want to find something that's actually called the tangent line. I want to find the slope of the tangent line because remember, a secant line crosses a circle twice, a tangent line crosses it once. So when we're talking about a single point, we're trying to find the rate of change of that line right there. There it is, right? The rate of change of the purple function is equivalent to the slope of that tangent line. Tangent line meaning that it just touches it one time. But we run into a huge problem. How do you find the slope of a line if you're only given one point? If you go back to algebra, if you had a good algebra teacher, you probably learned that that's actually impossible. You cannot find the slope given one point. Because if you think about a single point, there are an infinite number of lines that could cross that single point. That means there's an infinite number of slopes. So how do I find this specific slope? Well, that's where the definition comes in. Here's what we do. Now, I'm actually going to zoom in on Well, let me talk about first, then I'm going to zoom in on it. So what we want to do is we want to talk about finding the average rate of change between two points where this point is in between them. Hold on, what? Okay, hold on. Let me talk about this slowly. So let's first talk about, like, let's make two points, one on the left of my red point and one on the right of my red point. Now, if you watched my previous video, you should know how to find the average rate of change between those two points. All you got to do is connect them and find the rate of change between the slope of that secant line. Now, is the slope of that blue line the exact same slope as that red line? maybe, but maybe not. It might be close. It looks like the red line might be a little bit tilted, so they're not exactly parallel. Okay, so here's what we're saying. Let's let's get closer. Let, let's get closer. So let's lock in a little bit more. Let's find the rate of change between these two points. So once again, we're going to find those two points. The average rate of change is the slope of the secant line connecting those two points. So, okay, is that red line and that green line the exact same line? Do they have the exact same slope? Uh, maybe, they're probably close, maybe not exactly the same. Okay, so, but the green line is a better estimate of the red line than the blue line. Would you agree to that? And if I dove in even closer, again, the only thing I got to make sure of is that the point that I care about, that red point, is in between 
the two points that I make. Okay, so there's two block points, and if I connect them with a secant line, I could then find the slope of that secant line, and the slope of that secant line would be the average rate of change between those two block points. So again, is the red slope equal to the black slope? Maybe not, but it, I bet it's a closer approximation than the green and the blue. So the idea here is to find the rate of change at that red point. I have to get intervals that include that red point, and I have to allow those intervals to shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink, but still contain that red point. And as those intervals shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink, the slopes will get closer to the line I'm looking for. Now, again, this is what that Dr. Riddle, Dr. Seuss Riddle, I almost gave him my own riddle there, said. It says the rate of change, I'm, I'm speaking right here, the rate of change at a point can be approximated by the average rates of change of the function over small intervals containing the point if such a value exists. So it's exactly what I did. I, I first recognized that, you know, with only a single point, you can't find slope. Sorry, it's impossible. But if I approximate, I can approximate that slope of the red line by looking at small intervals and looking at the average rate of change of those small intervals as those intervals get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, I think I did a pretty good job of drawing that. I hope that that makes sense. So, you know, at the end of this video, Am I going to be able to find the exact slope at that red point? No. In the future, calculus, we will. But right now, no. This is pre-calculus. But I can approximate that by finding the average rate of change of increasingly smaller intervals that contain that red point. So if I do find the average rate of change of that black line, I'll be close. It'll be a good approximation of the slope of the red line, but it won't be exact. So here's a little bit, another picture that I tried to draw, and I actually think my other picture's better. So again, I zoomed in on that red point, so you see that red point right there. And, you know, the first thing we did was we said, okay, let's, let's look at this yellow line. This yellow line is from this point to this point, and that is a secant line, and I could find the average rate of change of that line. Um, that would be the line, my secant line, right? And, and that would be close to the slope at the red dot, but not exact. Then I could look at this green line, which goes from here to here. So it's a smaller interval. I'm closing in on that red dot, and that would create a secant line. I could find the average rate of change of that secant line, but it's still not exact. And then I could get this uh, blue turquoise line here. And um, again, I'm closing in. My, 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 my interval is getting closer and closer to the red. So I'm getting better, but it's still not exact, right? But here's what I want you to understand through this video is first is there is a line, a tangent line that just touches that red point. And the slope of that tangent line is, is my actual final answer, the rate of change at that red dot. But I can't find the slope with a single dot. So what I have to do is I have to get these, these secant lines and get the secant lines to get closer and closer and closer to that red line. And that is how I can approximate the answer. All right, so here's just another graph to kind of show you this, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to kind of look at this graph and I want you to think about, hey, there's the line I'm looking for. Boy, that I got to redo that. That's, that's just terrible. Okay, uh, it's, I'm just so bad at drawing lines with this program I use. Okay, there we go. Okay, there is the slope I'm looking for. So, I mean, I recognize right away it's negative, right? I mean, at least I can say that. The rate of change at that red dot is definitely negative. Okay, so that's a plus. But what is it? And again, that's where we have to say, okay, okay, okay. Let's approximate it. Let's go right here. That would be 3 comma 6. And let's choose this point right here. That'd be 5, 4. Those are two points. I do know how to find the average rate of change between two points because that's a secant line. Brrr, there it is. That's so, I can do that so quick. 4 minus 6 over 5 minus 3. I mean, come on, this is so quick and easy to do. And I get negative 2 over 2. That's negative 1. Okay, so the average rate of change of that green secant line is negative 1. That would be a decent approximation of the rate of change at the red, but it's not gonna be exact. But what I could do is I could grab this point right here, 
and I could grab this point right here and I could get a better approximation. I could get a better approximation. So that would be looking at, you know, what happens at 3.5. I'd have to approximate that. And then the other point here is maybe 4.5. And um, I would have to first get those outputs, which without the actual function would be approximations. But again, the point is I could get those, or I could estimate at 3.5, it actually looks to be around five. So maybe we, maybe we actually do the estimating here. That way we're not um, feeling clueless here. Okay, and then at uh, 4.5, it looks to be just above four. I mean, it looks pretty close to four, so. Um, right here at 4.5, Let, let's just say 4.1 for, for approximation purposes. So again, I could find the secant slope or the slope of the secant line, the average rate of change. So I'm going to do 4.1 minus 5 over 4.5 minus 3.5. So the denominator is pretty easy. That's 1. 4.1 minus 5. Um, you know, some kids are just really bad at decimals or whatever. I don't care. But anyway, hopefully you can do that in here. That's negative 0.9. So negative 0.9 divided by 1 is negative 0.9. You could call that uh, negative 9 tenths, whatever you want, right? But that would be a closer approximation of the red line. But it's still not the rate of change at that red dot. But it's a good approximation. So that's what I want you to leave this video with is knowing that you can't find the exact value right now, the exact rate of change at that one point, but we can approximate it by picking two points that are really, really close to that red dot. Okay.